So as a lot of you know, DeepSeek has done something recently that many of us did not expect. And we are seeing open source catch up, maybe even surpass some of the frontier closed source models faster than we thought in 2025. Just a couple weeks ago, we covered DeepSeek version three and how it's very incredible. You can do many cool things with it. It's very good and, and comparable to models like Sauna 3.5, GPT-40. And recently we've seen OpenAI's O1 Preview, O1, O1 Pro, and O3 low tuned and high tuned Get some crazy scores on the ARC benchmark. Now, if you're not familiar with this test, this is a test that basically shows from 2019 with GPT-2, 2020 with GPT-3, 2021, 2022, we're seeing slow, slow progress. And then boom, 2023, we're starting to get a little bit more with GPT-4. 2024, we got GPT-4.0 right here. So just a few months back, we're still only getting about five to 10% on this actual benchmark. This is the AGI benchmark. And then boom, the new paradigm happened with O1 preview with the new test time compute paradigm. And then as you can see, we're really hitting an exponential curve of growth right here with O1 getting over 25%, O1 Pro over almost 50%. And then the unreleased O3 low tuned and high tuned Getting closer to 90%, we're sitting about 87% with the high-tuned model. So if you don't know, the ARC AGI test evaluates whether an AI system can autonomously acquire new skills and solve novel tasks without human intervention serving as an early indicator of artificial general intelligence. And this is everyone's North Star right now, especially OpenAI. But now we are seeing some crazy benchmarks with DeepSeek's new R1 model. And as you can see here, like we say, never always, you know, believe 100% in benchmarks, especially when the company is putting out their own benchmarks, but you can get a good idea. And we're going to do some tests in just a second here, but you can see DeepSeek R1, DeepSeek OpenAI 01 right here, DeepSeek R1 32B, OpenAI 01 Mini, and then DeepSeek version three. We have different types of tests right here, code forces, math. And as you can see, DeepSeek is on par, if not even surpassing O1 in certain areas. All of that with about an 80 to 90% cost reduction opposed to using OpenAI's O1 model. So all of this is crazy news for the open source community. We're gonna dive into this model, run some tests, and I'm even gonna show you how you can use it today in a practical use case whether using NAN, cursor, whatever the case may be, let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so before we get into it, I just want to give you a quick recap. I'll leave this link to this thread down below. There's many people posting about this on Twitter, X. So as you can see, it's been, this was posted a couple days ago. It's been over, uh, 80 hours now since DeepSeek R1 was released. Open source, you can see many different use cases. Some people are considering this as AGI at home, running DeepSeek R1 on 7M4 Mac Minis right here. We got DeepSeek R1 1.5B running fully locally in your browser by web GPU. So many different ways you can use this. Someone right here building a perplexity clone with DeepSeek R1 in about an hour without writing a single line of code. DeepSeek R1 creating a rotating triangle with a red ball in it, and O1 could not do this. Building a rag app to chat with your documents using DeepSeek R1 running locally. This is another th cool thing, guys, and I'll show you this in just a second. DeepSeek also released smaller fine-tuned models like Llama 8B, achieving similar or per better performance than GPT-4.0 or Claude Sonnet. You can also run DeepSeek R1 Distilled Quen 1.5B 100% locally in your browser, really with anything, but here was with Web GPU again. And then a really cool thing is the DeepSeek chain of thought where you can actually read this out loud and it literally sounds like a human thinking. It's really cool to actually see this. And as we continue with this and this whole test time compute new paradigm, I believe that we're going to see more and more of these AI models acting and thinking as an actual human would through these problems. And another tip is you can actually make any model smarter just by extracting the reasoning from DeepSeek Reasoner. As you can see here, by the way, just extracted the reasoning from DeepSeek Reasoner and he used it on GPT 3.5 to turn it into an absolute genius. This is something that 
OpenAI has been so secretive about with in terms of how this their models O1 actually go about their thinking process. And now we can actually see behind the curtains with DeepSeek. So this is really powerful. So guys, if you haven't already tried this out, I would definitely recommend going to DeepSeek.com. All links that I cover in today's video will be linked down below and giving this a try. So I'm just going to show you an example right off the bat because this is just so cool. Now you can create a free DeepSeek account and you can also get the app on your phone. So I have the app on my phone too and it's pretty awesome. It's, it's actually a nice user interface. The one thing is, the caveat is this is a Chinese company. Um, so do with that what you may. I'm sure you already heard now about Project Stargate, but this is huge because USA is really trying to take the lead in terms of the AI race. And, you know, now we're seeing an open source Chinese model that's basically on par with the top frontier model that is closed source at the moment. So it will get interesting for sure. And keep in mind, they did all of this at a fraction of the cost of what it took OpenAI to actually achieve the same result. So pretty interesting stuff. Okay, so you can ask it sometimes very basic questions and it will do a large thinking process depending on the question, or you can ask it a little bit more intricate questions, give it a little bit more context. Um, but here I'm just asking, how is DeepSeek R1 a different paradigm with test time compute? How is it different from other AI models? And also, how is it different and similar to OpenAI's O1 and L3? Strengths, weaknesses, I'm doing a YouTube video on this topic. So we can turn on DeepSeek R1 right here, the DeepThink. You could also toggle on the search or toggle this off. I'm just going to keep it on for now. Now, this will search a lot of different websites that are in Chinese. So if you ever do get a Chinese response, sometimes you may get that. You can just say, hey, tell me in English. Now, if you have search on, you won't be able to upload a file. But if you don't have it on, then you could actually go ahead, upload a doc or an image. Let's go ahead and click send. As you can see, it is started its thinking process. So it's also first searching the web right here. So 50 resources were found. As you can see, you can scroll through these, see all 50 of them. Some are in Chinese, some are in English, and you can see that it's actually thinking. So it thought for 10 seconds, and I'm not going to read the whole entire thought process, but I will read you a bit just so you get an idea of how cool this is. Okay, I need to explain DeepSeek R1 and, and how it uses a different paradigm with test time compute compared to other AI models and compare it to OpenAI's O1 and O3. Let me start by understanding what test time compute means. From the search results, test time compute refers to the computational resources used during inference, not during pre-training. This is a shift from focusing solely on pre-training with massive data to optimize how models think during actual use. Looking at page one, it mentions that DeepSeek R1 and Kimi K1.5 are part of this test time compute paradigm. The idea here, is blah, blah, blah. As you can see, it's going through the different resources here and we get our answers. So test time compute paradigm, how DeepSeek R1 differs. So test time compute refers to blah, blah, blah. It's just explaining that, how it thinks step-by-step step throughout the problems, enabling for better reasoning and accuracy without solely relying on scaling pre-training data. So a few innovations with R1 is reinforcement learning first approach. So unlike traditional models that rely on supervised fine tuning SFT to prime reasoning, R10, R1's precursor, applied R1 directly to the base model, mimicking alpha zero's trial and error learning. This allowed the model to develop reasoning behaviors like self-verification and reflection autonomously. Minimal supervised data, so R1 later combined RL, reinforcement learning, with a small cold start data set of long chain of thought examples to improve readability and stability, avoiding the need for massive labeled data sets. Efficient reward design. Instead of training complex reward models, R1 uses accuracy, example, code execution results, and format rewards, example, structured output, to guide reinforcement learning, reducing computational overhead, and distillation for scalability, so R1's reasoning capabilities are distilled into smaller models, like 1.5b to 70b parameters, enabling cost-effective deployment while maintaining performance close to larger models. All right, now it's going through the strengths and weaknesses between DeepSeek R1 and OpenAI, different contexts, architecture, the cost right here. So it's 96% cheaper through the API, the openness of the model, the performance, the training efficiency. And then it talks about O3, the unseen competitor, strategic implications, takeaways for your YouTube video. So visual comparison, cost analysis right here. K1.5 
case study, broader context. So it is really, really powerful. As you can see, we got a link to the GitHub repo right here or DeepSeek. And like I mentioned before, we have DeepSeek V3, we have DeepSeek V3 base, R10, R1 distilled, Quen 7B, Quen 7, Quen 14B, Llama 8B, Quen 1.5B, Quen 32B, Llama 70B, and DeepSeek R1. So you could actually use these models locally. Now you would want to use the distilled versions if you're running it on your main computer most likely, unless you have some sort of supercomputer or you're running it on some GPUs. So as you can see, we have the 671B model, which is 404 gigabytes. Then we have the 70B one, 32B, 14B, 8B, 7B, 1.5B. So you could probably run the 14B depending on your computer. You would simply just go to Olama. You could also use this on a hugging face or whatnot. Um, but if you're using Olama, you could simply just run this command in your terminal if you have Olama installed, and then you could get this model up and running locally. You could also use LM Studio or any other alternative, of course, for this. Now I'm gonna do a lot more videos on DeepSeek R1 and how to actually use this in real applicable use cases. But I wanna show you two main ways, if you don't already know, just a few quick start actions that you can take to start using this right away. So first things first, like I mentioned before, you can check out the DeepSeek.com website. If you go to the DeepSeek API platform, you'll be able to see your usage, top up, billing, and you can create a new API key. You can go view their docs over here and you'll see that they provide a base url right here as well as you would just input your api key and then over here you'll see the model name so if you want deep seek chat that will be v3 and then deep seek reasoner right here is r1 you can see the context length max tokens max output tokens 1 million tokens input price so 14 cents and this is with cash hit and then 1 million tokens input price with cash miss 55 cents 1 million tokens output price 2.19 cents now unfortunately we have a few unsupported features right now such as function calling json output and fim now there are a few workarounds and i'll cover some of these in future videos as well but let me quickly show you how you can actually use this in something like n8n and cursor so within n8n i just have a very simple template right here as you can see this is just a agent right here and you, there's really two main ways you can go ahead and use it. So the first way right here, as you can see, it is DeepSeek Open Router. So if I click on this um, right here, so this is just an OpenAI chat model right here. All right, so we're going to connect this here. Now, if we open this up, you'll see this is my open router connection. So I have my API key posted right here. And then the base URL, which is openrouter.ai forward slash API forward slash V1. So if we go to open router here, you can see that we have DeepSeek R1. I'll leave a link to this down below. You can see it also mentions some additional providers of DeepSeek R1. So you could use DeepSeek, which I'm going to show you in just a second. You could also use Deep Infra, Together AI, and Fireworks. And you can see the latency, the cost, and everything comparison right there. We're just going to go ahead and copy this model right here. So it's DeepSeek forward slash DeepSeek dash R1. And once you have your base URL and API posted right here and you have your connection made, you can simply just go to the model right here and you're not going to use fixed. You're going to use expression and you're going to paste in the model ID right here. Once you do that, you really will have DeepSeek in your agent right here. We could go ahead and test it out right now. So I'm saying, hi, what model is this? And as you can see, it says I'm DeepSeek R1. Next, we have another agent right here. And this is the exact same, except the connection is just directly through DeepSeek. So if we go to our connection, you can see the base URL is this, api.deepseek.com. We got our API key right here from deepseek.com. And the model is deepseek-reasoner. You can get this from the API docs as well, but just simply put that in and you should be good to go. So now if we ask what model is this again, and boom, we get DeepSeek right here. Now you can do the exact same thing in cursor. So to do this, you would simply just go up to your settings cog right here and you would go to your models. Once you're in models, you would want to enable your OpenAI API key right here. And you would want to override the OpenAI base URL and just do openrouter.ai forward slash API forward slash v1, paste in your API key, and then you want to add a new model right here and add that same model ID, which is DeepSeek forward slash DeepSeek R1. And then as you can see, we asked it what model this is, and it's saying DeepSeek R1. 
Now, it would be cool if you could actually see the thinking process within cursor, maybe if there was a toggle of some sorts, but unfortunately you can't do that. Same thing with NNN, you can't see the thinking API requests at the moment. And as you can see, we get our answer right here, going over what DeepSeek R1 even is. But other than that, guys, that's pretty much it for this video. I just wanted to give you a high level overview as well as some practical use cases that you can start using DeepSeek R1 right now after watching this video in NADN and or Cursor. Now, if you want me to cover any specific type of video surrounding DeepSeek R1, showing you how to build certain things like AI agents or whatever the case may be, maybe an NADN or an actual code, let me know in the comments down below. I'm definitely going to be doing a lot more AI agent videos coming soon. Make sure to subscribe, like the video, and comment down below to stay up to date for that. If you're new to the channel, we upload videos all the time on AI agents, AI news, whatever the case may be. So subscribe to stay up to date for those videos. And then also to join our free Facebook group and Discord channel to connect with our community as well as to get behind the scene resources and templates and tools. So I'll leave a link to that stridecommunity.com and then definitely check out our Stride AI Academy. It is an exclusive community that we're building and it's going to be jam packed with loads of free values. So make sure to join that while it is still free. Also too, guys, if you run a business and you need help implementing AI agents like AI call center, AI appointment setter, NADN agents, whatever the case may be into your business, whether you're a marketing agency, a SaaS company, service-based business, B2B, whatever the case is, book a call down below at executivestride.com forward slash apply and we can see if it's a fit or not. Other than that, guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think about DeepSeek R1. Is open source going to catch up to closed source and surpass them? And stay tuned for more videos on Cursor, NADN, and a bunch of stuff that I have planned coming soon. Other than that, guys, keep hustling, keep grinding, and of course, guys, accelerate your stride. Take care.